Welcome everybody, Pablo here from Zemba. I've been dying to share this news with you. We're only weeks away from giving our waiting list members access to Game Dev Assistant. There are still rough edges, but it's already amazing and I'm never going back to using Godot without it. We're going to begin by doing a recap of everything that Game Dev Assistant can do. Those of you who've been following the project are going to be able to see all the new stuff. After that, we're going to go and look at the crazy prompt ideas provided by you guys in previous videos. Game Dev Assistant is a coding agent to help you make games faster in Godot by not only providing advice as a chatbot, but actually building parts of your game with you. This tool is a Godot plugin. You can see it here under add-ons. That's where all of the plugins live in Godot. It's called Game Dev underscore Assistant. And and what that enables is this new assistant panel. Now, this does all of the basic things that you'd expect from a chatbot. You can list your conversations, you can delete them, you can create new conversations. But what makes this special and unique is that it can actually understand and know what's happening in your project. When you start a conversation, it has an awareness of the scene, the different nodes in your scene, as well as your file system. And something we've added is that when you're having conversation, as you make changes in your scene, those changes are passed on to the AI so that you can actually have that conversation as if there was somebody next to you looking at what you're doing. To reduce hallucinations, the answers are always checked with the Godot documentation in the back end. And you can see here that we can add additional context to our conversation. So you can go and add the content of the script files that you have open, any error messages. You can kind of force it to look the documentations for a certain topic, as well as passing the scene tree, the file tree, and the git diff if you're using version control. For anyone following AI development, you might have heard of DeepSeq. R1 as and other reasoning models. So we've added that toggle here that lets you query a reasoning model. Now, what's the difference between the two? A normal model and non-reasoning model will give you a response right away. Whereas a reasoning model, it first has a thinking stage where it will think through the problem before giving you the answer. So um, it's better to use that one for more complex queries, although it can take a long time. So we could be talking about five minute wait for a more complex problem. Given all the developments that we've seen, I expect this to get much faster, to get like super fast very soon. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Game Dev Assistant is not only a chatbot, it can actually make changes to your project. The goal here is to help you realize your creative vision, that game idea that you have, so that you can move faster and not be stuck doing repetitive, boring things. Let's look at this example. Create a mini clicker game in which the player clicks on a red sphere. With each click, the sphere grows. Once it's been clicked 10 times, the sphere disappears. Show a simple particle effect with each click. Add a heads up display showing how many clicks are left. Now, I did want to clarify that this tool is not one of those make an entire game from one prompt. There are plenty of those out there for things like 3.js. And this is meant to help you so that you can build your game faster, right? So it's not a game creation in one go. But in saying that, I have been playing with a lot of like little prompts like this, like something really small, um, playable, and it can often do them when they're simple enough. So let's try this out. I'm going to copy and paste it into here. And I'm going to press enter. OK, so we've got a response here. It gives me instructions on how to create a 3D clicker game. It tells us what kind of nodes we have to add, uh, scripts, and some properties for the particles. And then it also lists which sources it consulted in order to provide you with this answer. So these are all um, documentation links that you can check to learn more. But the documentation of all of these classes was used in order to generate this response. Then what we have is clickable actions and this all kind of debugging stuff. So that's going to go away. But these are the actions that matter. So there are plenty of actions. And if we click on any of them, it's going to do those that action. For instance, it can create a script, create a node. Uh, it kind of does its best to follow the instructions that it gave you. It's definitely not perfect and doesn't always work, but we're going to try it out. So I'm going to click apply all. And we can see that most of them were successful. The particles had some issues there. 
and you can go and see nothing's visible because meshes have not been assigned draw passes. Um, so that's something that could be modified, but for the rest, it kind of saved us the time to go and create all of those nodes ourselves. Uh, in addition to that, it also created some uh, scripts. In this case, this file here, click sphere. So we've got the, the, the script there and we're gonna run the scene to see if it works. So I can see my sphere there. I'm gonna click on it. I can see that it grows in size. Now, the only thing that I'm not seeing from my original requirements is the label. And I'm not exactly sure where it is. So here we go. It looks like the the anchor was positioned in a kind of in an awkward spot. So it has to do with element positioning. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit and let's try it again. So we can now see it and you can see that it is indeed telling us how many are left. Of course, you can go and position that in a different place if you want. It doesn't have to be a child object of the 3D sphere. Let's look at more examples. Some of you provided really cool ideas in the previous video with some prompts that we could try. So we're gonna read this one, create two scenes, an overworld scene and a combat scene. On the overworld scene, the player can move their character using the WASD keys and interact with the NPC using E. After triggering a dialogue with said NPC, transition to the combat scene. In the combat scene, have the player NPC choose and execute actions in a turn-based system. So there's a lot, a lot in here. And one thing I wanted to be very transparent about is that Game Dev Assistant is not a full game, create, it's not able to create an entire game in one prompt, or not at this stage at least. It's able to create shorter, smaller, playable elements. And in fact, it's not even designed to make the game for you, but to help you move super fast when you're creating your idea. So what we can do with a prompt like this, with a suggestion like this, Game Dev Assistant can definitely help us here, but the way to go about it would be to deconstruct such a requirement into uh, smaller tasks and then try those one at a time and, and then you can actually make pretty quick progress. I've taken that requirement and simplified it to the overworld aspect. So create an overworld scene where I can move a player using the arrow keys fixed to the camera. There should be an NPC somewhere then I'm telling it what sprites to use, what images to use, and I have those in my project. So there's character 0001 and for the player and the NPC should use 0002. If the player runs into the NPC and presses enter, log hello in the console. Keep it all simple, don't add anything extra. I wanna explain why I made some of these changes. Firstly, in Godot, you already have input mapping for the arrow keys for space and for enter as well as a few other keys. So I wanted to make sure that I'm using those so that we don't have to add new input mapping just to get this thing started, to have less things to do. Secondly, I separated the two scenes and I even separated different mechanics. I thought, okay, let's get player movement working first and basic collision with the NPC uh, and, uh, and that interaction. And then let's log that hello in the terminal. So we're gonna copy that and try it out in Game Dev Assistant. So in here, I'm gonna paste those requirements. And just like before, because these are requirements that involved a lot of different elements, I'm gonna be using the reasoning model. Okay, so we've got a response here. These are the instructions, and these are the scripts that it wants us to apply. And I'm gonna go and apply all these changes to see what happens. So it's creating a bunch of nodes and files and usually there are little things to address when that completes. So um, I can see here that there was, there was an instruction to create a new file, and then there was a prompt to modify a file. So the automatic action will create a new file with this content, but file edition is not yet supported, so we're gonna have to go and modify this ourselves. So I'm gonna open the NPC script, and I'm gonna go and uh, let's copy this code and add it to our file. Oops, delete that line there. I can also see that there's a warning there, collision 2D um, doesn't have a shape. So I'm gonna select that, inspector and give it a shape. Let's use the rectangle shape. I also don't want them all to be in the same position. So I'm moving the player to a different place. Now we're gonna press play to see what happens. So firstly, movement. Um, 
it moves with the arrow keys, but the movement is um, upside down, if you will. So I press left and it moves right. <laughs> so I'm going to go and see what happens when I collide. And if I press enter, I can see hello in the terminal. So we can see that it almost got it. <laughs> um, if it hadn't been for the movement, it, it would have gotten 100%. Okay, let's look at one more example. Prompt for next video, create a start screen for my game, which includes the setting menu, which saves the settings as a JSON file. So again, this is one of those requirements that I would deconstruct in smaller requirements. For instance, a first um, thing to ask the AI could be just to create a start scene, should have center title, my game and buttons play settings quit when you click on any of those buttons let's just print something in the terminal okay so this is super simple and if you implement something like this and you can go about creating the actual setting scene and then you could create work on that uh, json saving aspect so we're going to copy that paste it here uh, we're going to try the reasoning model again because that just gives us a more consistent um, response when it comes to these kind of requirements, especially if we want to use the actions, uh, the reasoning model works a lot better. Okay, so we've got a response. These are the instructions, things we have to do. It's telling us to create a new scene, add a few nodes, and then there's a script that connects the buttons with signals um, so that we can log uh, the different buttons in the console. Um, then there's the scene tree, and these are the documentation links that were used. I'm going to go and click apply all to see what's going on here. And it created the new scene, start scene, and it has all of these elements. It has my game, play, settings. Um, so let's try it out. Oops, there's an error there. It looks like the script wasn't created properly, but for some reason it didn't copy it. So what I'm going to do is just copy it myself, save, and try again. And we've got our screen here. If I click play settings and quit, actually quits the game. So that's a nice addition. I'm pretty happy with how this went. Um, even though I had to jump in and add it manually, I think it was still pretty good. And again, this tool is not meant to create the game for you, but essentially to help you move faster and get stuff done much quicker. If you want to get access to this tool, um, the closed waiting list beta access is going to take place in a few weeks. There's not going to be any cost uh, initially during that closed testing uh, uh, period. So that's going to be your chance to try it out and see if you like using Game Dev Assistant. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put it in the comments and I will see you in the next one.